How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sunday Night Heat, hosted by yours truly, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. You are a WWE Canadian podcast that talks about the WWE and No Holds Barred and anything we say, pun intended. This episode of the Sunday Night Heat is being recorded live right here on Spreaker at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP. And after it is done, it will be posted in full on Spreaker. It will also be posted on our YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash NHBWP. And it will also be available on iTunes by searching up The Lowdown Show. So, And also be on uh, Stitcher Radio. That's right, Stitcher Radio. So go check us out where it will be easier and convenient for you to listen to us and myself uh, truly right here on the Sunday Night Heat. You can follow the podcast on Twitter. And the Holds Bar WP, enjoy in the conversation, have your thoughts and questions read right here on the show. We are also available on Facebook and Instagram by searching up No Holds Bar WP. So go give us a follow. Guys, the Sunday Night Heat this week will solely be based on some dirty news, and I'm going to recap last night's NXT TakeOver Chicago event. And my God, was it ever good. It's, it's no surprise that NXT TakeOver puts on a good show. Like, we shouldn't be sitting here going, wow, we're actually shocked that it was good. Because we knew it was going to be good going into it. Let's be honest here. We knew it was going to be good. A sip of water here. Um, last night, I don't know. Obviously, the match that took it away for me was... Uh, it took something out of the entire event last night was uh, Asuka, uh, Ruby Riot, and uh, Nikki Cross. I, I really did enjoy the match. It was all right. Um... The ending kind of was lackluster for me. Uh, I don't know. I I couldn't get behind the whole the whole match. There was nothing exciting. As soon as Amber Moon got taken out due to injury, I I just didn't give a shit about it. Like there was nothing to interest me into it. And I knew it was going to be the ending with Oscar retaining and and carrying on that streak like she should be. The girl should be undefeated her entire career in NXT until she gets called up, and then they do what we you know Dirty does what they do with their talent when they get undefeated and getting called up. She'll probably lose her first match, but. She should stay undefeated right now in NXT. I just didn't like the match last night. Whatever. It is what it is. Um, but yeah, this show will slowly be based on the NXT TakeOver recap. Let me just adjust my mic here. And we're going to do some WWE news. So let's get onto the card for NXT TakeOver recap. And I should have it up here. I can't believe I don't have it up. Um, but last night, definitely. Uh, match of night, I can already tell you right now. Match of night for me was the UK match. And I'm sure it was with a lot of you out there. Um... God, was I ever a good match. And I even put it out on uh, our Twitter account that, for me, this is match of the year so far out of NXT and WWE. I know we have our own slammies at the end of the year uh, every year on uh, No Holds Barred. And to me, this is this is going to beat both categories. Like, this so far, this is match of the year. That was so incredibly done. Both young talents in the ring there. God, they have such a promising future. Insane. Um so we'll talk about that when I get into it. But, uh, NXT TakeOver opened up with Roderick Strong uh, against Eric Young. Uh, me and Cappy had our uh, differences with this match. He went with his boy Roderick Strong. I was going to go with Eric Young and, and believe that Sandy would play a factor in this match, which they did. But Roderick Strong still ended up with the victory. And this is actually a really good match. A really good opening contest to get the crowd into it. The crowd was very behind Roderick Strong. Um, I think this guy is probably going to be the next top guy eventually once Bobby Roode gets called up. I think they're grooming him into that, uh, basically that category. And um, Eric Young is Eric Young. I, I put out a funny tweet saying the guy looks like he'd be the leader of like a like a, a hobo gang or some some kind of hobo gang, deranged hobo gang. And I, it, it's hilarious. Like if you were walking down the street, you know, in like a old part of like a downtown major city and you get like a gang of hobos, Eric Young would be the, the prime leader. Just letting you know. I'm just saying. <laughs> he just, he looks like that type of guy. But uh, Sanity is a really good faction. I love, I love everything they're doing in NXT when they get called up. I'm I'm guaranteeing they're going to do a Sanity versus uh, Wyatt feud eventually, maybe if the Wyatts ever get back together during a draft or something. Um, but I can see they would be doing a lot with Sanity. The whole gimmick itself is amazing, and each individual talent can have a really good signals run as well, as, we can, as we've seen with Eric Young one-on-one with Roderick Strong and Nikki Cross in her own uh, match in the triple threat match later on in the night. But yeah, Roderick Strong defeating Eric Young with that sick-looking finisher. Um totally forgot what he calls it i think i can pull it up here uh yeah i don't remember oh the end of heartache 
That's it. End of heartache is the the, the finishing move for uh, Roderick Strong. Really sick finisher. It's almost like a different variation of the lumbar check that Cedric Alexander does. And um, I thought it was pretty cool. And the way Eric, or the way Roderick Strong was built in that match, everything made sense. Both characters uh, didn't look weak at all. Um, you had Eric Young with uh, his help from uh, his sanity members of Alexander Wolf and Killian Dane. Um, so good for Roderick Strong, and I hope that this leads to better things for him. Uh, second match of the night, uh, my match of the <laughs> my match of the year so far was the the UK Championship. Pete Dunne versus Tyler Bate. Holy crap, this match was insane. There were so many good spots in this match. This killed it for me. This I don't know how you could even follow this match for the rest of the pay per view. I can't believe this didn't go on last. If this went on last, it'd be amazing. But of course, it's for the WWE UK Championship. They can't really do that. It's got to end off in the NXT title. But this was amazing. Um, Pete Dunne, the Bruiserweight Beast. Uh, I've been following him up a little bit uh, ever since there was the, the starting of the rumors of this new evolution being built together with Pete Dunne. So I started looking into him a bit, and I love the character of Pete Dunne. I love where he's come from, and I can get really behind Pete Dunne. Uh, Tyler Bate, kid's only 20 years old. Like, he just turned 20, and he was a UK champion. Like, <laughs> in- incredible. This guy has a huge future ahead of him. Both of them do. Pete Dunne, I think, is 24 years old, so... Um, I can see a lot of good things coming out of both these guys in the future with WWE and uh, whatever they do with this UK TV thing. So Pete Dunne winning the title tonight in an epic match. Definitely match of the year in my category and definitely match of the night last night. Um, Again, I don't know how you could even follow this match. There are so many good things to say about this match. It was so hard to critique it. Like I, I can't think of anything that went bad in that match. It was great. Such a great match. It went thick. 15 minutes long. Um... It's, it's incredible. Um, if you guys don't know about uh, UK competitors or ever even watch the UK Championship, go back and watch that UK Championship. It, it's incredible. The, the guys that perform in the UK are on another level. It's, it's incredible. That's why it was so good last night. So applaud to uh, both guys, Tyler Bate and Pete Dunne. Uh, we're going to move on to the uh, NXT Women's Championship, the triple threat match. Uh, Oscar versus Ruby Wright versus Nikki Cross. Oh, man. <laughs> oh god uh, I critique this match hardcore because I thought it was bad and again I'm saying it like I said in the intro already um, taking Amber Moon out of this match did a lot for me I didn't care about this match I, I knew what was going to happen there's no way Ruby Wright or Nikki Cross was going to beat Asuka there's no way in hell you cannot sit there and tell me that one of these girls had a chance they're not groomed yet they're not groomed properly they haven't been built into a top woman contender on NXT yet. And I think Darby is waiting for that women's tournament to see if they can gain some more talent out of that to add to the roster. So as for right now, Oz is going to stay the champion until then. And I guarantee until they find a next suitable champion, which will probably be Amber Moon. I say Amber Moon is going to win the title from Asuka at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn uh, this August. And then we're going to get the call-up of Asuka right after that. Um... But yeah, Asuka winning by pinning both of them at the same time, sure. It was a physical match like I predicted it was going to be. Like, both Nikki Cross and Ruby Riot are freaking nuts. And their crazy physicality in the ring is is something to to witness, definitely, if you haven't uh, watched it, guys, or have watched these girls. Um, they're definitely going to play a factor in the NXT Women's Division in the future. They're just not NXT Women's Championship material right now, in my opinion. Um, if you guys could have different opinions out there. That's fine. That's just, in my opinion, they're not ready for the title yet hopefully soon we'll see um so we moved on a shocking thing here this 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 took a lot of people off guard and it took me and corporate cappy off guard but uh bobby Roode and hideo tommy had the fourth match in the card so they weren't even in the main event um and this match went on for like 17 minutes long really really good match this is better than i thought it was going to be i honestly thought it was just going to be a quick 10 minute match and then uh there'd be you know Basically, giving two thumb or two middle fingers up to CM Punk and having Bobby Roode kick out of the GGS, which he did. But I love the way they did it in this match. They had a Tommy kick out of the Glorious DDT first, then they had uh, uh, Bobby Roode kick out of the GTS, and the way they did it actually made a hundred percent sense because it didn't make it didn't take a shot at CM Punk. It kind of took it to a level where it was kind of like an even playing field. Like both guys kicked out of each other's finishers. Like what, what, what guys had to do to each other to, to, to end the match was, was something they had to think about in, in, and play more into the match. Um, 
So as the match went on, uh, there was more of Bobby Roode uh, favoring that shoulder injury. He was really selling it good last night. Um, and a Tommy playing to that shoulder injury. And then eventually Bobby Roode couldn't, could barely lift up a Tommy for the glorious DDT. And eventually Bobby Roode got eventually won a hold of a glorious DDT and then picked him up right after. So he, he, he kept the hold of the DDT after the first one. And then he lifted him up right after and then gave him a second glorious DDT um, directly right after the first one. So uh, there was only one GTS, I think, in the match, and that was the one that Bobby Roode kicked out of. And then Bobby Roode ends up winning the match, as he should have, and defeating Hideo Tommy to retain the NXT Championship with uh, both... Uh, uh, glorious DDTs, and I was expecting a lot of CM Punk chants out of this, um, a lot of people on Twitter was reading that they are expecting and giving, like, their predictions and how many chants, there was one chant, but they kind of, like, it's like the crowd knew, like, okay, well, let's not be goons about this, and half of them were booing the other half of the crowd that was chanting the CM Punk chants, <laughs> I found it really hilarious, and I was reading all the comments about it on Twitter, and, uh, there's also this one thing going on, on Twitter, it was completely fake, ladies and gentlemen, Every, take it, do not take it as it being real, um, there's a picture going around right now that CM Punk was at the event last night. He was not. It is 100% photoshopped. Um, it was basically photoshopped. I forget what event they photoshopped the picture from. The picture is from, I think, him watching a USC event, and they cropped it into the NXT crowd. And whoever did it did a really, really good job. I'll give him that. But it's, it's fake. CM Punk was not actually there. Do not believe that picture that is circling around Twitter right now. It is a joke, so everyone just calm down. CM Punk was not actually there. It's it's okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure there would have been a hell of a lot more CM Punk chance if he was actually there. So, um, yeah, anyways, only one CM Punk chant during the whole match. I was fine with that. And I'm fine with Bobby Roode retaining, as he should. There, there's not really a clear-cut person to um, take the title from Bobby Roode yet. Uh, maybe Roderick Strong eventually when he gets groomed. But I think Bobby Roode's going to be holding on to that title for a long time. And he's probably not going to get called up until next year after WrestleMania. So and that's fine with me. If they're going to keep him as the, the face of the company, why not, man? He's doing such good work with the whole glorious gimmick. So praise to Bobby Roode. Now we went into the main event of NXT last night. And that was crazy. I can't believe it was going to be the, the tag team title match in the ladder match. That's crazy. But uh, this was a really, really good match. Um, although I do have criticism for Akam and Rizar from Authors of Pain, they do, they need some work on selling, because there's a lot of times in the match where they're climbing the ladder, and there's a way to sell yourself to climb the ladder very slow, as if you had a really hard match, and you're, you're barely climbing up the rings of the ladder, but then there's, uh, uh, Rizar and Akam last night, or like, five minutes into the match, you had a tough time climbing the ladder and just kept it was like this awkward moment they just kept looking at Paul Ellering Paul Ellering's like get the hell off the ladder and then they're just like walking I don't know this I think Akam and Rizar I don't know if I'm giving them enough credit they need to sell more they're 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 not doing it for me and I sent out a tweet about it but like to me they need some work on doing that if they're going to stay as NXT tag team champions as they did they defend they defeated DIY last night and we all know why because we had we saw what happened after the match so I think maybe they could have done it with them with the titles, but I think it makes more sense if they didn't have it with the titles. So, Authors of Pain retaining the tag team titles. So, no title changes, or one title change, a UK title match uh, tonight on NXT TakeOver, or last night on NXT TakeOver Chicago. And as we saw after the ladder match, um, speaking of the ladder match, that was a crazy brutal match. I love the one spot where uh, Champa German suplexed, uh, I think it was Akum. Or it was, I don't know, one or the other, threw the ladder and it literally like imploded and shit went everywhere. Probably one of the best spots of the night. I loved it. Um, but yeah, Authors of Pain retaining. And we saw after the match, uh, Johnny Gargano, Tommaso Champa on the ramp, saluting the crowd. And then Champa suddenly heel turns on Johnny Gargano as the, the, cur- the rumors before this of them splitting up came to fruition and came true after Ch- Champa just absolutely kills Johnny Gargano after this. Just brutally attacks him and then they go up on the top of the announce table that's uh, located beside the stage and like Ch- Champa gives him like this Irish curse backbreaker off the table and then threw a bunch of other tables that are placed on the ground where all the equipment is. Really, really good spot. Um, and then how how Champa was able to get up and, and continue after that is incredible. And I have some news on Champa in the Derby News part of this show, so stay tuned for that. Um, but I, I'm loving this. I love the feud that they're going to do with Psycho Killer and Johnny Wrestling. 
this is going to be a great feud, ladies and gentlemen. I know a lot of people are pissed, and they're comparing this to the, the Festival of Friendship of Jericho splitting up, and everyone wanted DIY to get called up as a tag team. But they could still relax, everybody. They just they need to keep NXT going. And I think this is the smart move to keep these guys in NXT and feud with each other because it's another hot feud to add to another takeover event and to keep NXT rolling. This is money, ladies and gentlemen. Listen to me right now. This is money. A, a, a Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa match at the next takeover event is probably going to be a show stealer. Look at what they did at the Cruiserweight Classic. If you didn't know, these guys faced each other at the Cruiserweight Classic, if you didn't remember. And they had an epic match at the Cruiserweight Classic. The crowd loved it. Um, I remember getting like a four star rating, something like that, and it was a really, really good match. So them putting on a feud with each other and starting it now until the next takeover event is going to be epic. I think both these guys are going to put on a great match at NXT Takeover Brooklyn. So Champa and Gargano is going to be a really good feud, guys. So just hang on and bear with them. They can get this feud out of the way, and then they can get called up as a tag team. Maybe the next draft, or maybe by the end of the year, they get called up as a tag team. I think they're fine right now as. Uh, and them feuding with each other and not getting called up right away. So I know a lot of people were upset about that, but I see what Darby did, and uh, it definitely makes sense. In my opinion, it makes a lot of sense. So last night I gave uh, NXT TakeOver a, a 9 out of 10. I would have given it a 10 out of 10, but the women's match really killed it for me and lost a point there. I think Corbett Cappy gave it an 8 out of 10. Uh, and he, 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 gave, he lost two points because of that women's match, so he agreed with me, but... Definitely a point loss for the women's match from a perfect score. So, but Takeover, man, Backlash has a lot to follow uh, with uh, with Takeover. So, we'll see what happens. I mean, NXT Takeover uh, Chicago, and then you have Backlash the day after, man. I don't know how Backlash is going to keep up with Takeover, man. It, it, unless they have some plan with Shinsuke and uh, Dolph Ziggler. To be an epic match, I've, I'm hearing the rumors of Kevin Owens and Styles ending off the show. That gonna, that's going to be really sick. Um, I can't wait that for that to happen. If that actually ends the show, I, I, I mean, I, I, all of us would rather see that than Jinder Mahal and Randy Orton. Let's be honest here. No one, have, no one, no one wants to see that end the show. <laughs> Especially the Chicago crowd. They're going to eat that. They're going to eat that match alive. I wouldn't doubt. Now listen to me here, guys. You're hearing this, hearing this first. I wouldn't doubt that tonight. But the first match on the card, like the uh, the main card, not the pre-show, the main card is the WWE Championship match, Randy Orton and Jinder Mahal, to get out of the way. I even because of the the backstage heat with Randy Orton that's happening right now, I wouldn't doubt that that's the first match of the night, man, just to get it out of the way. And I wouldn't doubt if Jinder won it, man. So we'll see what happens. But uh, that's my recap of NXT TakeOver Chicago, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in right now and listening live right here on Spreaker.com slash NHBWP. And if you guys want to follow us on Twitter, No Holds Bar WP is where you can follow us on Twitter. Follow in with the tweets. You can tweet us on the shows we have, the Lowdown Show every week. We'll review Raw and SmackDown. Um, you can tweet at us, and we'll read your tweets at the beginning of the show. You have your chance to win Twitter Fan of the Month and Twitter Fan of the Year, so tune into the show on how you can do that. We are also available on Patreon if you want to support the show. And if you want to support our uh, journey to WrestleMania next year, we also have a GoFundMe page. All links will be on YouTube in the description section, so go check us out, guys. And, yeah, so that's it for that. We'll get into the, the news part of the show. And we'll start off with uh, what I said about Tommaso Ciampa, and I got an injury update after TakeOver last night. Uh, Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano were unsuccessful in their quest for the uh, NXT Tag Team titles at TakeOver Chicago. The team lost their ladder match to the Oshers of Pain. What is making headlines is what happened after the match, and we all know what happened. Ciampa turned on his tag team partner and best friend Johnny Gargano, turning heel in the process. He, pro he would proceed to beat down Gargano to close the show. Uh, Triple H was interviewed after NXT TakeOver where he didn't have any good news on Tommaso Ciampa. As noted prior, Ciampa hurt his leg a few days before TakeOver. If you guys don't know, he hurt himself at a uh, live event over the weekend and the referees threw up the X's immediately. If you guys don't know what that means, when he throws up the X, that means the match has to end right away and the wrestler is seriously hurt and Ciampa limped to the back... In the end of the match, and Ciampa uh, limped to the backstage area. So, um, Triple H said, I just walked past Tommaso Ciampa who is furious about everything but is in the trainer's room who with what looks like a significant injury as well. And Triple H saying significant is obviously not a great sign here. Let's hope that he is okay and only needs a few weeks off. Props to him for working, though, through the injury last night. Um, 
to have a significant injury like that and to be pissed off after. He worked through that entire ladder match. And you just think about the crazy spots that Tommaso Ciampa did last night with like the crazy leg spots that he did, and he had a leg injury in that. Insane, man. The guy's passion for wrestling is incredible, so let's hope it's not a bad injury. And he's back soon to carry on this feud with uh, Johnny Gargano. Uh, so next bit of news, Chris Jericho reveals original plans for the Universal title at WrestleMania 33. And when I read this, this is very, very interesting. So listen here, ladies and gentlemen. Chris Jericho was recently a guest on Busted Open Radio. He spoke on a wide variety of topics about his recent run in the WWE. We have already covered Jericho's thoughts on how he would improve with the current WWE Cruiserweight division in another article, which is uh, the one that was attached to this, and I didn't want to go over it because it was it was basically too obvious, and I didn't really want to talk about it. So let's stick with this article. Uh, Chris Jericho revealed during the interview that the original plan for WrestleMania 33 was for him to win the Universal Championship from Kevin Owens. Yes, Chris Jericho winning the Universal title from Kevin Owens was the original plan. He was supposed to go on to lose the title to Brock Lesnar at payback of this year until plans changed. Here's what Chris Jericho said. It wasn't supposed to be that way. I was supposed to finish up after WrestleMania, that Monday afterwards. And about, I don't know, December maybe, Vince McMahon called me in and hell, he had a big idea for me. I can probably say it this now, the original idea... Because things can change all the time for me and Kevin Owens to work WrestleMania. It was for me to win the title and then lose it to Brock in Sacramento at the next pay-per-view payback on April 30th. So this is coming right from Chris Jericho's lips. that The original plans for WrestleMania. So Jericho says that Vince McMahon eventually changed his mind and had Goldberg win the title instead. Jericho went on to say this. And so when you get presented with the idea... It's like, sure, of course I'll stay for that. Then things go. The Goldberg factor started on Vince changed his mind. And at that point, I already lo- was locked in for extra months. So, basically, that was the only reason why Jericho signed on to stay extra months. Was because he thought he was winning the Universal title. And then, like, halfway through, Vince is like, nah, nah, we're going to have Goldberg win the Universal title. Are you kidding me? Why to screw up Jericho like that, man? I know, like, the work he's done... Regardless of that original story has been great, but come on, man. That would have made such a better match. And I remember me and Corporate Cappy talking about this before WrestleMania, how it should have been title for title. It should have been Chris Jericho versus Kevin Owens in the main event of WrestleMania, title for title. Winner gets both titles. You can have Jericho lose the title to the US title to Kevin Owens, maybe on the Raw after, and then lose the Universal title to Brock Lesnar at payback. They'll have like Kevin Owens screwing him over or something like that. I don't know. They could have done such a better job, but with Vince change his mind to gold. That really pissed me off. And it, it, he had the plans laid out for a good WrestleMania. And he, I hate when Vince changes it, man. It, it's really a, a really a really killer thing. And so, yeah, those are the original plans, guys. We didn't know for the Universal title for WrestleMania 33 of this year. Um, so we want some other news. A rumor killer on Kurt Angle's in-ring return. Kurt Angle has been on the job as Raw General Manager for about a month and a half now. It has been great seeing Kurt back on WWE television on a weekly basis, but many fans still want to see him wrestle another match for the company. Angle himself has been very vocal wanting to wrestle for WWE and is very confident that he will. Ha- it will happen one day. So when will it happen? The latest on the situation several weeks ago was that Angle would be undergoing a physical to determine if WWE would clear him to compete. It is unclear when the physical will take place, but it will be... Uh, the key to his WWE in-ring return. According to some rumors floating around, if Angle does wrestle again, it won't be until WrestleMania 34, which is amazing because me and Corporate Cappy are going to that, and to see him wrestle again WWE, and and that'll be the the next time, it'll be amazing, and it'll just add to our experience. So if that's true, I'd love it. And uh, more of this article, if it's true, this makes a lot of sense because WWE would want to save the return of Angle to be a big moment, and if it's announced several months from now that Angle will make his in return at WrestleMania 34. Interest for the event will be driven up immediately. So I see maybe they can do something around SummerSlam, maybe. I'm thinking maybe they announce it uh, after SummerSlam or on the road to Survivor Series. They announce that Kurt Angle will be wrestling at WrestleMania 34. Maybe they do like a Rock Cena thing. They already have his opponent lined up, and then they do a like six months build until the event. I'd love that, and I'd appreciate that, and that'd be amazing. And it just add to me and Corporate Cappy's experience of going to WrestleMania 34 next year. Uh, everything is depending on the physical of Kurt. 
but based on some of the in his interviews recently, it seems like he thinks that he will be able to pass the test, which I think so. The guy's been sober for X amount of years now, and I think he's really, really trying hard to get to that level of, uh, I guess you say, healthiness so that he can get cleared by the WWE medical team to wrestle again in the WWE. So hopefully it happens, and hopefully we get to see one more match out of Kurt Angle in a WWE ring. Um, some other news, backstage update on Paige in the WWE. So my girl Paige, is, uh, if you guys don't know, she's one of my favorite and you know, still is one of my favorite woman wrestler of all, or basically of all time. I've loved her since her debut of NXT. I was on my day one Paige fan. Uh, while Paige is still out of action recovering from neck surgery, Wrestling Observer Newsletter editor Dave Meltzer says the feeling in WWE is that she wouldn't be brought back to television at this time even if she was cleared to wrestle. In light of her personal issues and how outspoken fiancé Alberto El Patron, or Del Rio to you other fans out there, uh, he has been about WWE, her status with the company is helped by the fact that WWE and The Rock are developing a movie based on her family. Now, could you imagine if they weren't and there was no film about Paige and her family being made? I guarantee she'd be fired in two seconds, man. What Del Rio has done for, or based on what Del Rio has done and Paige being alongside being as an accomplice with Del Rio, it's not a good, it's not a good thing right now. It's not a good environment. Um, I know Del Rio is a good guy. He's not taking away anything away from him. Just the stuff he said about WWE, I mean, he could have not said it, man. He could have just left it alone. But he's come out and said some interesting things about WWE, and it doesn't help, you know, Paige's return. So I definitely think that's playing a factor into Paige's return too. But I hope she has a speedy recovery, and we actually see her back in the ring one day. Um, we got Summer Rae backstage update. So Summer Rae, you guys, she's, she's still here. <laughs> if you guys have forgot about Summer Rae, she, she didn't go anywhere. Uh, it's been quite a while, duh, <laughs> uh, since the WWE Universe has seen Summer Rae on any WWE programming. Her last match was coming at a live event last August in Loretto, Texas, before suffering a shoulder injury that kept her on the sidelines for nine months. However, it was previously reported in late March that Summer has finally gotten the green light to begin training at the Performance Center in Orlando, Florida. On the last, latest episode of the Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer revealed that Summer is ready to return. However, the company is still trying to find a role for her while also deciding which brand to put her on, even though she was drafted to Raw during the brand split of last year. So I'll be interesting to see what they do with Summer Rae. I'm interested to see what they do. Um, I think she's she's really good talent. A lot of people don't give Summer Rae enough credit. Um, yeah, she's done some cringe things in her past, and she's been used as a jobber, basically. But she actually is a good wrestler. A lot, and you give the, the same credit to Alicia Fox. You see what she can do against Sasha Banks, and they're giving her a little bit more time. When you give a little bit more time and a little bit more space to these wrestlers, you can see just how good they are. It's just the character development, is, the way they push them is, is wrong, for that matter. Um, but Summer Rae, has been interesting to, Summer Rae, it'll be interesting to see what they do with her uh, in the coming months. We got Brock Lesnar's scheduled appearances that were released. And we're not going to see Brock Lesnar until June 12th. June 12th is the first date in Monday Night Raw in Lafayette, LA. Uh, we're also going to see him on June 26th of Raw in Los Angeles. We're going to see him on July 3rd Raw in Phoenix. So the, the Raw before Great Balls of Fire. And he'll be at the July 9th event, Great Balls of Fire, defending his Universal Championship. And he'll be on the Raw after in Houston. So those are the scheduled appearances so far for Brock Lesnar and his, uh, I guess you can say, his part-time basis schedule. Whatever. We, we know our thoughts about Brock Lesnar. I don't need to get in depth about that or rant about that. Um, next bit of news, we got some Twitter drama. If you guys haven't seen, there's a big Twitter feud right now going on with uh, some of the divas or women in WWE. So let me get straight to it. There's been a lot of Twitter drama between Lana, Sasha Banks, and the WWE Universe earlier today, which was yesterday, after Lana liked a few tweets made by former WWE Women's Champion Melina. Yes, Melina. For those of you who don't know who Melina is, she was a uh, once a WWE diva back in the PG era, and she also was a uh, manager for the Eminem gimmick. Of Johnny Nitro and Joey Mercury. Um, as as seen in the tweets here, uh, they're made in reference to Sasha Banks losing to Alicia Fox on this week's Raw. So this is Melina tweeting about it, and these are the tweets that Lana liked by Melina. So these are what Melina, this is what Melina said in three tweets. She said, "People need to have a broader viewpoint." 
There's a story being told here, and that's what is drawing me in. What if this was why? Sa- what if this is why? Well, what if this was why Sasha lost? This wasn't mind games. It was mocking. It's underestimating your opponent and fueling her determination to win. This, this, that's just one of the many possibilities of what could have happened. But it, it's got people reacting and talking. That's great booking to me. So that is exactly what Melina said. Fans saw Lana liking these tweets and took it as a ravishing Russian dissing the boss. I don't know how you can take this as dissing. It's basically Melina saying that for the people, the internet marks to calm down. It's, it's all part of storyline. It's all going to come to fruition. It's all going to work itself out. And there's a reason behind why WWE made Sasha Banks lost to Alicia Fox. And people are taking uh, <laughs> Lana's liking of these tweets too, a little bit too seriously. Um, Lana responded to the criticism, but with this tweet. Let me clarify, when I liked at Real Melina's tweets, I think Sasha is a game-changer wrestler. I also think it gets more eyes on the story with the 10 sign emoji. Sasha then tweeted the following as the apparent response to Lana. When you are confident in your own talent and abilities, you have no reason to tear down tear down others. Hashtag legit boss. Sasha, Summer Rae, and some of their friends then started using hashtag BL2017, which fans are assuming it means block Lana 2017. After after Lana tweeted on how she would block anyone who left negative comments for her. She also says, also, I will block the hate. I've said this many times before. I put my haters block on. I'll block people that tweet lies or mean remarks. And then Sasha Banks tweeted hashtag BL2017 and forever. And Summer Rae put hashtag BL2017. Whether this is a work or whether this is just women being what, you know, the divas being divas for a useless situation and... That's basically what it, we're, we're seeing here. It, 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 I don't understand it. I think it is, it, maybe they're just bored and they're like jabbing at each other. But why Why all this for someone liking tweets? This is why social media is like a huge, huge, huge factor in WWE and why it can ruin some things. Um, this is just basically like they need to stop fighting. It's, it's ridiculous. Whatever they're fighting about, it's ridiculous. I'm not talking about it anymore. Whatever. Maybe it'll... <laughs> Maybe it'll all come out to fruition and it'll just play itself out. Whatever. I'm going to move on. Uh, so a little news here and there. CM Punk offered $1 million to wrestle again. Five Star Wrestling Promotion is reportedly offering former WWE superstar CM Punk $1 million to wrestle in their upcoming tour, according to the UK Sun. The tour is being built around a 128-man tournament. Yes, you heard that right. A 128-man tournament, which kicks off next year. Founder Daniel Hinkles issued the following statement to The Sun about the offer. He says, We've been trying to contact CM Punk on and off for well over a year. We wanted him on the first show we did in Edinburgh in 2015. I tried going through friends in the industry. I've gone through his website and sent dozens of emails, but the opportunity has never been this big. We want to offer CM Punk $1 million, which is £770,000, to come and join the Five Star Wrestling Tour starting June 10th. It's a genuine offer. We'd love to hear back from the man himself. We want to do this with him. So CM Punk getting offered $1 million in five-star wrestling, doing uh, what needs to be done and getting the word out by sending it probably to every news source out there so CM Punk would eventually see it. So whether CM Punk takes it or not, who knows? I don't think he's going to take it. I think he's done with wrestling in general, whether it's for WWE or any indie company. So we will see what happens with this. I doubt just in my opinion, I doubt he is going to um, wrestle again. I think he's going to stick with MMA and stick to what he's doing right now with appearing on MTV and stuff like that. But whatever. Just leave CM Punk alone, guys. He's living his life. I'm done with CM Punk. He was one of my favorite wrestlers, but I don't think he's coming back. I've come to terms with that, and I've come to accept that. So that's going to be it for the CM Punk news. Um, some last bit of news here. Uh, the next two feuds for the women's and main title in NXT have been already talked about and are probably going to come to fruition in the next couple of weeks. We got Bobby Roode versus Drew McIntyre, which is probably going to happen in end at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn for the NXT TakeOver, or for the NXT title. <laughs> uh, so Bobby Roode and Drew McIntyre, that's an interesting feud. Um, and Asuka is, uh, they have no idea. They are not sure. 
They they might do a Peyton Roy storyline. I'm reading about uh, here and there. Who knows what's going on with Asuka. But uh, maybe Ember Moon gets healthy enough and they start something there. But I do believe if or if NXT wants to do it right, it'll just be one-on-one with Asuka and Ember Moon at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn. And I think Ember Moon would probably be the one to take it away from her. So we'll see. Um, as for the tag team titles, I've read that Heavy Machinery... I don't know if you've watched NXT a lot. They're these the new really big tag team that are getting a lot of uh, a lot of praise in NXT, and the crowds are uh, giving them a lot of praise. Uh, they could be in line for the next uh, tag team to get the tag team title shot against Authors of Pain. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, don't think I have any more news. Yep, I think that's going to be it, and no Skype calls, so I think I'm just going to end the show off like this, guys. I got some stuff to do before Backlash tonight. I hope you guys enjoy WWE Backlash tonight. Um, it's going to be a good one for sure. Um, also, after Backlash tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have our live review and reactions of the pay-per-view uh, right here on Spreaker, so tune into that, and we are going to take some Skype calls as well. During that, and it's going to be no, it's going to run for a couple hours after payback. So make sure you follow the Twitter account, Noel's Bar WP, and look out for the uh, live tweet so you can come in and listen. And you can come uh, call into the show and talk some backlash with us, and we'll give us our review and reactions with that as well. So, guys, that I think is going to about do it for the Sunday Night Heat. Right here on No Holds Bar Wrestling Podcast, hosted by yours truly, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. And we are your Canadian-based WWE podcast that talks about the WWE and No Holds Barred on anything we say, pun intended. This episode of the Sunday Heat was recorded live right here on Spreaker, Spreaker.com slash NHBWP. After we're done recording, it will be posted in full on Spreaker. It will also be on our YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash NHBWP. It will also be available on iTunes and Spreaker, or not Spreaker, Stitcher Radio by searching The Lowdown Show. So go check us out wherever it's easier and convenient for you. You can also check us out on Twitter again, ladies and gentlemen, at NoHoldsBarWP. And you can go also, also go check us out on Facebook and Instagram by searching up NoHoldsBarWP. So go give us a follow, guys. Go give us a five-star rating on iTunes. Anything helps. I'm your host again, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. And I'll see you tonight.